taking the sky down to the lowest level. The tree and this tree will stay out close to the uh, original thickness. So this is the horizon right at about this level. There's going to be kind of a cluster of trees back in the horizon here. area right in here will be almost the same thickness as the background. start getting the shape of the mountains this one here is in front of that and I'm kind of want this mountain to come down and bring our this is our focal point here so I'm trying to bring the lines down uh, towards the focal point to In determining the planes of the cabin, the roof is going to go back this way in the face of this house. We're going to have a stop cut going under the roof. Then here we have the chimney. This side of the cabin is going to be going back in this direction. The depth of the cabin we know has got to sit on the ground. So the first thing I will do is put in the stop cut of the roof line. Here I don't want to lose the chimney so I'm going to come right up like this here. Come in like that. Now the chimney sticks out a little bit further than the wall of the house. So I'm just going to come back in a little bit like so. Then I take my number three chisel. And I'm just going to start. It's going to go back at an angle in this way. The wall is also going to go back, but I'm going to slope it down. So it, it's going to be rising out of the wood just a little bit. This stop cut is going to have to go deeper and to find out how deep I need to go I need to put this wall of the cabin right down on the ground. Everything is heading towards a vanishing point on the horizon about over here. So I'm just have an imaginary point that I'm shooting for out there all your perspective lines meet at the horizon. I'm going to have the corner sticking out a little bit. That wall is pretty close to where it's going to end up. So now I can take the roof down. But that overhang is too large. We'll establish the plane for the tree and we do a little bit of outlining also for this tree. We know it's got to sit on the ground so we can start taking it down to the ground. Then we need to round the tree. The tree is sloping out a little bit but not so much that it's going to be noticeable. I haven't removed any stock here and here I'm fairly uh, almost maybe halfway into the wood. So 
So we have the layering done and the contouring and I'm just going to start contouring the bear. Going up and working on this fir tree, uh, we have it contoured to put the leaves in. I'm just going to come from the side. Now if I come from the side here, I'm going to bust it out here. So I'm going to come up from here. That's working into the strength of the wood. And I'm going to do this side before I do this side because it will make that barrier stronger. In the contouring and making these cuts, I'll start rocking the chisel so it'll start putting in some of the detail as I'm doing the rounding. Rocking the chisel is a good way to put in textures. Like on the tree here, a lot of that is going to be just rocking the chisel, making the cuts just like drawing in the texturing of the leaves. This perspective, the vanishing point of these lines is the horizon. The horizon is more here. So this line here is rising up too much. So I'm going to bring that down like that. All these three lines should be pointing at the horizon. Someplace like out here they're going to meet. And this was a void area in here, so I'm going to make another little tree back in here, just to kind of break up the monotony there. The water's smoothed off and ready to put the texture in. And you don't have to be too careful about making sure that all these planes match. Just as long as they're close enough that the eye can't tell the difference, that's fine. So, uh, we're going to make some rings around the feet here that are still in the water. A little bit here from this one. And then we're going to make some rings around this rock. And then just kind of do the water texture. Like the siding or the logs are going to go in this direction horizontal. So I'm going to put the texture on the door. are going to be vertical boards and I'm going to put a window in that door. Now for the shingles, I'm going to do the same thing, just put in the rows of shingles. Make the shingles more like cedar shakes. They're going to be a little rougher. Keeping at random. Keeping the angle at the same angle that is on the sides of the row. Not going straight like this. And I'm just looking at the areas that are kind of blank, and I'm just adding some texture in there. I'll just take the same V-tool and put in the ripples here in the water around his leg. And I'm doing a little rocking action, so the lines that I'm cutting are not going to be really straight. They're kind of the ripples in the water. I'm just going to add some of the heavy ripples with the V-tool. A number seven gouge here that I'm just putting in some small ripples in the water here. The ripples that are closer to you are larger. And the hair on the bear, you can see the hair is running in this direction. I'm just going to take a number five gouge. I'm just running it like this rocking the tool. So I use a variety of techniques. To get the whiskers off you can just kind of make some little cuts going this way. Just brush it on the surface. Cutting very little off. So I'm just doing a little bit of the refinement before I start putting the finish on. If you want to use sandpaper to do your cleanup, you can do that also. After I apply the first coat of varnish, 
it'll raise to grain. Then I go in with a uh, like a 400 grit sandpaper, an emery paper. And I don't mind starting the varnish having the whiskers on there because when I do the light sanding for the second coat, those whiskers will break right off. Also when I'm varnishing, I might pick up the chisel and carve right through the wet varnish to create some more shadows. So in the finishing process, the supplies I use, well I like to wear gloves, uh, so I wear rubber gloves. I use disposable brushes to varnish and uh, the real bristle brush. Small, also a, a, it's an oil painting brush. It's a true bristle brush. It's a very short one and I'm going to use this to take my oil paints and I'm going to deepen the shadows. What I'm going to do is be putting a clear coat of varnish on and when the varnish is wet, uh, then I'm going to be working in the oil paints. And I think what I'm going to choose is going to be the burnt umber. I will put a clear coat of varnish on the back and the sides and then I will work on the front last. Uh, I'm going to use the Helmsman. It's an indoor-outdoor varnish. It's a spar varnish. The gloss that I'm using, I've added the powder to make it flat. I don't uh, worry about making bubbles in there by shaking the varnish because I have the bristle brush that I use that has the surface tension for breaking up those bubbles. So I just kind of scrub it in just trying to make sure that I have a good coat on it. The second coat that I put over the top will be just a clear varnish and that will be a lighter coat. Okay, now I'm ready to start building the shadows with the oil paint. So I'm going to take the burnt umber. My calling cards have got a slick finish on, so that works good as a little palette. And I just need a little bit. And I apply it with the small paintbrush and I'm just going into the deep areas right where I'm trying to build some shadows underneath the trees and some of these areas. Now I blend it in. So it just I want to pull those down and make it gradual. I got too much up in here, so I'll just take some more varnish. And I just keep extending that paint out, letting it get into the crevices, increasing the shadows. I don't want it too noticeable. Just increasing the shadows is all we're doing. If you think you got too much in some area, you can just take a paper towel and wipe it. Now the window panes, I want to get a little bit, you know, the diagonal reflection in there. So I'm going to start just putting some diagonal lines in the so you see I go back and I do some carving even after I start putting the finish on. <laughs> 